Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming to our session, which will be talking about building resilience and adaptation measures with co-benefit, with co-mitigation benefits in the Red Sea and the Arabian Gulf. We have six speakers today. We're presenting the six presentations, starting with Dr. Khalid Abdul Qadir. Would like him to go to the podium. Dr. Khalid Abdul Qadir has a PhD in biological oceanography from Texas A&M University. He's a senior consultant with Saudi Aramco Environmental Protection Department. He's a board member of Saudi Wildlife Authority. He is a past chairman and current member of the Environmental Technology Management Association, and he is the vice chairman for the Saudi Aramco Environmental Committee Standard. Thank you. Go ahead. I hope we'll be able to keep you awake uh, at the time of this day. And um, I will start my presentation today with the outline of the presentation. I will start with the first initiative, that is the establishment of fisheries management framework. Then I will shed some light and development of fish hatchery in the Arabian Gulf, and then developing the fishing port and deployment of artificial reef in the areas of the eastern uh, part of the, of the Gulf. And then I will conclude with some remarks. Uh, the Arabian Gulf contribute to the national welfare with its fisheries resources. Up to this time, it is unknown that the magnitude of the fisheries resources, what are the ecological consequences, its environmental footprint, and whether it's able to contribute further to the economic diversification and the national food security. However, driven by increasing demand and population increase, total volume of the national uh, and currently less than half of the seafood import, making the kingdom dependent on the other countries for fisheries resources. And if you look at this graph, you will find the increase of the demand of the fisheries going up with the population increase, while still the production and the harvesting of the Gulf is still at the same level. So the Ramco, in collaboration with the Ministry of Environment, Water, and Agriculture, has realized the need to establish a, a foundation for a scientifically oriented fisheries management in the Arabian Gulf to increase the utilization of the available fisheries resources, at the same time avoiding any potential fisheries decline, resulting from overexploitation or habitat degradation. <clears throat> to achieve that, King Fahd University of Petroleum and Mineral with ST Technalia from Spain were hired by Saudi Aramco to conduct four scientific fisheries studies to determine the population dynamics and the stock assessment of major commercial stocks of the Gulf and also to indicate essential fish habitats and quantify the environmental footprints of fishing methods, the current fishing method in the Gulf. All of this, these results will be utilized to develop a management framework for sustainable fisheries management in the Gulf. These are the major commercial stocks in the Saudi water that were selected for the assessment and biological composition. Now I will demonstrate some of the results <coughs> of the stock assessment and population dynamics <coughs> a study using the different models to determine the exploitation status of the green tiger shrimp. The one on the left, the one on the left, sorry, uh, it is a mathematical model known as a generalized depletion model run by the KFUBM is a conservative model usually used when the data is limited 
where the results indicate the stock in the optimum condition and is stable and does not recommend any increase. However, in the graph at the right, <coughs> the mathematical model, surplus production model used and run by ST and usually used in Europe where data is available and long series of data is, is abundant. The results of the model indicate there is a high potential to increase the shrimp harvest from the Saudi water. This is a stock assessment on exploitation set of a Spanish mackerel, where both model, the generalized depletion model and surplus production model, both indicate the stock is underutilized and there is a big potential to increase harvesting. One of the important results for the essential fish habitat study is quantifying the role of coastal embayment as a crucial nursery area of shrimp and other many fish species as known by the green circle in the maps. Where these are very important for, for, for uh, uh, circulation and protection of the uh, juveniles, Saudi Aramco board has designated all of these embayment as a corporate biodiversity stewardship areas. These are also results from the essential fish habitat study shows the importance bounding areas of sea bream, shrimp, and the growers. <clears throat> Interesting results of the offshore surveys indicated a higher fish location with a higher number of oil and gas installation. These areas serve as no-take zones because of banning fishing within a five kilometer radius. They provide protection to fish resources from fishing and therefore contributing themselves to enhancement of fishing resources. And here, there's in, the, in your right, there is a paper in IACS Journal of Marine Science just published by the team indicating and documenting these scientific findings. One of the amazing results of the discovery of a huge stock of a small pelagic fish biomass by using hydroacoustic surveys. This predicted biomass of sardine and anchovies in Saudi water could exceed 200,000 tons, which could double the current fish harvesting from the Gulf and could generate a new industry in seafood processing. Another initiative pursued by, by the company is building a fish hatchery in Abu Ali area. The goal of the hatchery is to restock selective native commercial fish, such as Hamur, Shams, Bayti, and Shari, which is the most popular commercial fish in the Gulf, by releasing up to 10 million juvenile fish per year into the Arabian Gulf water. The hatchery will also support biodiversity of the Gulf through restocking the imbalance of marine ecosystem <laughs> by repopulating overexploited fish species. And the hatchery also will enhance local fishing community by enhancing the available fisheries resources. These are uh, the fish main component, which are the outdoor parent stock, indoor breeding, and pre-release acclimation and where warehouses and laboratories here. <clears throat> the Arim Fishing Board, also another initiative by the company, which just completed and will be handed to the Ministry of Environment, Water and Agriculture. The board includes a marina with a capacity of docking 540 fishing uh, boats, and the board comes with associated supporting facilities needed for the fishermen community. And the main objective is really to enhance the working environment of fishing community and 
as a result, will encourage also young Saudis to involve in this sector. The fourth initiative by, the, by Saudi Aramco, which is the creating artificial reefs in the Saudi water. Uh, the objectives of this uh, initiative increase fisheries production, enhance biodiversity, restore degraded natural reef, and reduce diving pressure on natural coral reef in the Gulf. To conduct this initiative, we have implemented three phase scientific approach. First phase, we conducted a scientific study to determine an optimal site. Second, design, deploy, and monitor 25 sites in the Gulf with more seven, 700 reef modules. Three, fa third phase, to monitor and assess and plan to future expansion. Dr. Khaled, you have one minute. One minute, okay. These are the locations surveyed for artificial reef sites. Selection, keeping in mind the program goal for fisheries enhancement, biodiversity enhancement, and coral restoration. This is the mega, mega reef in Abu Ali area, which include a three design, tested and recommended, cubes, pyramid, and domes to provide optimal design and to meet objectives for different sizes and species of fisher, fisheries in the, in the area. <clears throat> in conclusion, these initiatives have provided management of framework for sustainable fisheries resources in the Gulf by assessing the major commercial fish stocks and had identified the importance of fishing habitat, ways to, and ways to protect them, and also determine the means to avoid impact for current fishing habitats and increase the stock of native fishery by releasing up to million, by two, 10, 10 million fish per year and enhancing the working environment of fishing community by providing the fishing board. Also will promote fish production and biological diversity by deploying artificial reef in different areas. And just I would like to conclude with a, a quote from EU Nature Role in Climate Change, which says, by conserving nature and restoring ecosystem, we reduce impact and increase resilience. Nature conservation and restoration is a major cost-effective ally in our fight against climate change. Healthy, resilient ecosystems have a greater potential to mitigate and adapt to climate change. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Khalid. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, I would like to ask you to hold the question until the end of our session, where we'll have all the speakers on the podium, and later on we'll have all the questions. I would like to call for our second, spe second speakers, uh, Ms. Engineer Faisal Shail, to go to the podium. Engineer Faisal Shail is a project manager for Stormwater Strategy Network designer of groundwater lowering control program. He's also a member of the infrastructure coordination committee. And he's also a member of the groundwater committee. And I would like him to go ahead with the presentation. It's a pleasure to present for you the area of stormwater drainage strategy. background about Riyadh, which is the capital of the kingdom. Then we will go through the work stage and the main issues we have faced. Also, we will present the master plan review out of that, we come up with the flood risk assessment. And finally, we will go through the recommendations and the decision. The city of Riyadh is located in the middle of Najd Plateau, which is uh, in the middle of the kingdom, with a population of 6.5 million and with uh, urbanized or developed area 1,400 square meters. 
Also, the city is situated within two catchment. The large catchment is Wadi Hanifa catchment, 4,000 kilometers square. And the second catchment to the east is Wadi as -Sulay. These are the boundaries we have, uh, which we have done the uh, master plan on. And that was in 1435 Hijri. Where at that time we have only 27 percentage of the existing network for the drainage system. In the work stage, we have went through the data collection and analysis, hydrology, hydrology review of the catchment, and the master plan review and the flood risk assessment. The first main issue was that the rapid development of the city has increased the urban runoff. Also, the master plan principle was to drain all of the water, all of the rainfall out of the urban areas without taking in consideration any green solutions at that time. However, the design standards and hydrological parameters did not reflect the actual setting of the city, which had led to design a lower network capacity. Also, we did not consider the climate change effect in that time. So the master plan main results was that we have defined the mainstream paths for the way, for the uh, waterways, and that come out from the later survey. Also, we have updated the hydrological data by using most accurate meteorological data creating an accurate rainfall intensity and duration across, across the city, building the actual storm profile for the arid zones, and applying area reduction factor if needed. From the flood risk assessment, we have simulated the existing network with its capacity and with uh, the different uh, retain periods. So you will see the bubbles increasing with the different retain periods as 1 in 10 and 1 in 25, up to the 1 in 100. These bubbles will not stay in the same location. So it will move through the bath pathways, which is reflected in the 2D model we have created to mitigate the current uh, risk or any residual, uh, residual risk. So we came out with uh, 210 schools are in the risk in the worst case. And we came out also with 20 hospitals, 86 enterprises. And for the roads and intersections of the roads, we have came up, up to 1,100 1, and more, where the uh, stream paths intersect with the main roads. And since we have the mega project, we have also assisted that project to know which uh, metro stations are in the risk. We came out with 26 location are in the risk. And for the metro line itself, there is 72 points. So the main recommendations, uh, the review of the master plan was resulted in key strategic recommendations and decisions of environmental planning and engineering strategies to deal with the future storm water in the city. And this review led to an important strategies. The first one was pre preserving the natural wadis in the future planned areas and rehabilitate the partial developed wadis. Use the sustainable urban drainage systems, develop a planning guidelines using of attenuation storage in the extreme events such as parks or uh, recreational areas and increasing the green or brown roofs solutions. Also, we have asked to do a temporary solutions for the identified flood risk areas, such as an event management plan. A new strategy of the city is in preparation to handle the risk, if the risk is there. And thank you very much. Thank you, Engineer Faisal. I would like to call for the floor, uh, Engineer Hashim, Sad.
Sorry. Hashim Saad is the head of the conservation technology section, conservation and energy efficiency department at Kaharama. He was awarded an MS degree in sustainable engineering from the Luperbro University in the United Kingdom. Engineer Hashim has two patents under his name and in the solar energy field. And he is also a member of the Qatar Foundation Achieve Achievers Campaign. Thank you. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Energy of water. We have four steps. First of all, uh, desalination, pumping, and the end user. After that, the treatment. Energy and CO2 footprint for water. Uh, Desalination, we have a three kind. We have MSF, we have MED, and RO. MSF is 160 to 170 megajoule per cubic meter, which is a 3.5 and 3.5 and 5 kilowatt hour per cubic meter. MED is a 100 megajoule of cubic meter, uh, 1.5 to 2.5 uh, kilowatt hour per cubic meter, and RO 5.9 kilowatt hour per cubic meter. So the, the average for energy here is a 3.46 uh, kilowatt hour per uh, cubic meter and plus 157 uh, megajoule per cubic meter. Uh, energy use is bombing water. We have a vertical and horizontal. The vertical, if we say 100 meter, uh, it's equal 0.36 kilowatt hour per cubic meter. Uh, horizontal 100 kilo uh, meter, it's equal 0 0.04 uh, kilowatt hour per cubic meter. So let's say if we have a customer, he's 5% in distance. The, the total we have in Qatar for uh, piping, uh, the network is 6,500 uh, kilometer. This is by 2011. So if we say we have a client, he's in 5%. Uh, from uh, the plant, 100% 100 meter uh, vertical and 5% horizontal. That will equal the energy is 0 0.37, uh, 0 0.37 kilowatt hour per cubic meter. Energy use pumping and uh, the wastewater. Energy use and transfer pumping in our uh, buildings and home is with the heating is 0.1 kilowatt hour per cubic meter. Energy use wastewater is 0.32 uh, kilowatt hour per cubic meter. So the total for all these steps is 4.25 kilowatt hour plus 157 uh, megajoule for the cubic meter, which is equal 8.2 of CO2 per cubic meter. Uh, KM, which is uh, the organization I represent, Kahrama, uh, it have two conservation plan, one for the existing building and one for the new building. <coughs> for, uh, for the existing building, we have a case study. Uh, sorry, for the new building, we have a case study, which is Doha Zoo. In Doha Zoo, we have HVAC plant. This is the graph can show for you. 6,000 uh, cubic meter, the consumption, the demand for the HVAC. And this is the domestic, uh, 1,200. So in total of all of these, we have uh, 21,800 cubic meter per day. What we done, we changed the HVAC plant water and uh, the irrigation, we changed them to TSE, not portable water what we use it uh, normally. We say, uh, actually, we save 18,000 cubic meter per day for the demand. So we save 82.5% of the water consumption. What equal uh, the estimate saving yearly is 1 million cubic meter. And by CO2, 
we are saving 8,100 CO, uh, ton of CO2 yearly. There is another uh, example about Al Khor, which is a city, Al Khor Park. Uh, most of the water, the demand is 33 p uh, cubic meter per day. And uh, the irrigation is, is the most uh, consumed there. We changed the, con the sensor for uh, the, con the water irrigation to seasonal because we have a different uh, temperature in Qatar, uh, summer and winter. And we just done that and we, uh, we, uh, we save 29% just to change, uh, we change only the control, <coughs> which is equal 28 tons of CO2 yearly. Uh, the bulk customer, the bulk customer uh, back home, we have now new ideas. We have 10 customer, the, the highest 10 customer from each sector. We are uh, trying to uh, to give only the 10, the 10 customer, the highest 10 customer. You will be surprised of the number. For example, the 10 highest uh, governmental uh, customer, it's 86% of the total governmental consumption in water and in industrial is 77 percent only the top 10 uh, the 10 high commercial is 39 percent almost 40. the 10 highest hotel the major hotel is 87 percent uh, the 10 highest hotel the small hotel is 74 percent and the only two highest productive farm in Qatar, it's 86% of the total consumption of water in this sector. So now we are just focused on this, uh, the highest consumption, the highest customer. Protective water regulation. We have a new regulation uh, in Qatar about water, uh, toilet and uh, urinals. We have the toilet single flash which is the first one, is 4.9 liter uh, per flush. The total uh, dual flush, the full one is 6 liter, and the half one is 4.2 liter. Uh, the arenals, 1.9 liter per flush. We have also for the shower and factors, uh, 5.7 for the residential uh, factor, and we have 3.8 for the non-residential and for the kitchen sink, 8.3 liter. Anything above these numbers will not allow to enter Qatar. For, we have also a new system for irrigation in Qatar. <coughs> if uh, the plan is use one uh, cubic uh, meter uh, for uh, irrigation daily, or if it's more than 100 uh, uh, meter square, he need to have uh, irrigation system, no flooding water, plus separate uh, tank than the normal tank they use it for home. Uh, if the irrigation uh, requirement is 85 cubic meter, or it's above 7,000 uh, meter square, uh, no potable water he can use, only the TC. Uh, the data analysis, uh, we start from 2012 to plan uh, to do the conservation in Qatar. In 2013 and 2014, 2015, it's shown here with all the governmental and commercial, industrial, and residential. It show here all the data, which is here in the graph. It can be uh, more easier for you. You can uh, find the governmental and residential is 40% each of them. The commercial is 17%. The industrial is 3% of the total consumption in Qatar for water. The actual BCC, as you can see, uh, the green line, this is the actual BCC. We're supposed to have, in this day, 250 liter uh, per person, uh, meter per person yearly, but we save until now 14.4%. Uh, our target is very high, is 35% reduce per uh, capital consumption, which is very high, and uh, we know it's possible uh, 
to reach it, but we challenge ourselves and we put big target for us. Uh, the actual BCC, uh, it was uh, in 2016, which is the base year, 16,294. Uh, this is for the electricity. In 2013, uh, we reduced it 10%. 2014, we reduced it 7%. 2015, we reduced it 7%. And this is the electricity consumption. You can see also uh, the green line, which is uh, the actual, what's supposed to be, and uh, the red one, what we are doing right now. Engineer Hashim, you have one minute. OK. So this is the demand. Uh, this is uh, the, the total here in this graph. will show what we, uh, our goal until 2015 we save for national gas uh, 163000 uh, million cubic feet and we save 5.5 million tons of co2 2 billion 270 million real which is equal 622 million dollar we save in this three year by only saving the consumption for water uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Engineer Hashim. <coughs> Dr. Ahmed Khalil. Dr. Ahmed Khalil has a PhD in marine ecology from the University of Bremen, in Germany. He's an assistant professor in, at, in marine ecology at the University of Khartoum. Dr. Ahmed led the consulting of the regional organization for the conservation environment of the Red Sea in the Gulf of Aden, Persiga, for conducting regional mangrove assessment and development in the region. Go ahead, Dr. Ahmed. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum. So I'll uh, I will focus on my presentation on uh, efforts of Persiga, the regional organization for the conservation of the environment of the Red Sea and Gulf of Aden, and building resilience of coastal ecosystems and communities in the Red Sea and Gulf of Aden. Uh, the regional organization for the conservation of the environment of the Red Sea and Gulf of Aden is an intergovernmental uh, organization dedicated for conservation of the marine environment in the region. Uh, uh, it has a legal base is Jeddah Convention signed in 1982 by uh, the member states, seven member states, bordering the Red Sea and Gulf of Aden, including Jordan, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Sudan, Djibouti, Yemen, and Somalia. Uh, 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 the, the, the regional convention also has uh, four related uh, regional protocols and uh, action plan. Uh, uh, Bersiga developed uh, a regional climate change strategy and program since 2007. Uh, and this program conduct uh, capacity building and many other aspects of building uh, resilience, adaptation, and also uh, ecosystem-based uh, mitigation uh, activities. Uh, 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 let us uh, first, uh, uh, maybe I will summarize some of the features of the Red Sea related to the climate change, uh, which have implications for climate change. Uh, the Red Sea uh, is, is, is warm, is the warmest uh, among the oiled seas. Uh, it's extremely, it is located in extremely dry area with high evaporation and high salinity. Uh, uh, there is limited exchange with the Indian Ocean uh, through the narrow and shallow Babel Mandip. And uh, the Red Sea is a coral dependent uh, uh, sea. The life in the Red Sea depends on coral. And it has unique biodiversity and high endemism. There are many endemic species in the Red Sea. Uh, the Red Sea area also has rich carbonate uh, sediment. Uh, this uh, could have some implications. Uh, the negative ones are that 
uh, the same includes nature of the Red Sea uh, by also uh, limit and the limited upwelling as well could accumulate the impacts, any kinds of impacts, uh, uh, including climate change uh, impacts, and also limit distribution of uh, important inputs like oxygen and uh, carbonates, which are important for corals. Uh, uh, the high temperature also is close to the upper physiological limits of, uh, uh, of the species, and uh, the combined effects of uh, increasing uh, surface temperature of the sea or the warming of the seawater with the ocean acidification uh, are, have impact on the corals and could jeopardize the life in the Red Sea. Uh, there are also some positive aspects of these features that the limited exchange with the Indian Ocean can reduce exposure to the extreme events such as uh, a Nino or extreme uh, climate change uh, impacts and the high salinity can modulate ocean acidification but at moderate uh, pressure of carbon dioxide uh, the rich carbonate sediments provide relatively some uh, resilient system or some resilience for system to uh, adapt or to, to be resilient for ocean acidification uh, the limited variability the seasonal variability in the red sea helps in uh, 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 monitoring climate change uh, uh, and detection of climate change, uh, which is maybe as variability is very high in other seas, which mask detection of long term uh, change like climate uh, change. These are some features of the sea. Now, what Bersiga is doing for building resilience, uh, this encompasses uh, uh, many areas, uh, 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 reducing multiple stressors to increase the resilience of the ecosystem, strengthening monitoring capacities to uh, uh, strengthen also capacities for forecasting proactive planning capabilities, and also supporting alternative livelihood for vulnerable communities, especially coastal fishermen communities, and enhancing conservation restoration for ecosystem resilience, and coordinating uh, the regional efforts for regional conservation of the member states and conservation actions. Uh, uh, concerning reducing multiple stressors, Persiga has uh, three programs, control of pollution from sea-based activities, and these are based on uh, regional protocols concerning oil and uh, hazardous uh, uh, substances, uh, this was signed in 1982, and uh, uh, emergency and contingency plans were developed for the countries, and regional contingency plan was also developed. BERS will also provide technical assistance for contingency planning and training on pollution combating, and navigation aids, reduction of navigation risk, and uh, especially uh, in, in the southern uh, Red Sea. Uh, uh, and also there is program on fisheries and now focusing on initiative uh, on implementing ecosystem based uh, fisheries to, fish, uh, to management of fisheries and development of aquaculture. Uh, uh, strengthening monitoring capacities, uh, 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 there are programs for monitoring key habitats and species. The main key habitats are mangroves, seagrass beds and uh, coral reefs. Basically, developed regional standard methods for monitoring uh, such habitats and also for key species, species, key animal groups like marine turtles, sea bears, and marine uh, mammals. There is also uh, technical assistance for uh, strengthening national monitoring of seawater and also training capacity building to monitor sea level rise and ocean acidification. And also, recently, Basica supported online installing of online monitoring uh, stations like uh, in Jordan and also strengthening uh, regional forecasting and planning capacities through training. Uh, uh, supporting alternative livelihoods for vulnerable coastal communities, we are doing this under a strategic ecosystem uh, project uh, with, the, with, the, with the support of the World Bank. We have uh, demo 
uh, sub projects or salt demo projects for fishermen and communities vulnerable to climate change in marine protected areas. These uh, sub projects focus on non extractive uh, use of uh, marine living resources, enhancing coastal uh, ecotourism, and providing also water and renewable uh, energy solutions to improve value chain of fisheries, agriculture, and livestock uh, products, and also. Uh, uh, provide technical assistance for low carbon fishing practices and diversify marketable products, uh, especially for women, to increase women incomes and empower women in, among fishing uh, communities. Uh, uh, also enhancing conservation, restoration for system resilience. This is based on specific conservation plans of, for key habitats developed also uh, at national and regional levels and there are guidelines developed for technical assistance and technical system provided for restoration of key coastal habitats like mangroves and coral one, reefs one minute uh, okay and environmental education <laughs> program and uh, and there's also coastal and water cleaning campaigns awareness campaigns and community-based restoration uh, plans and finally uh, the, the Bersiga is, is a forum for conducting uh, uh, regional forum for conducting regional meetings, coordinated meetings, and training, annual training uh, program. And this provides capacity building, sharing experience and knowledge among member states, and with also with neighboring uh, regions and harmonizing of regional uh, actions. And actually, this has been, uh, this role has been increasing uh, the, the number of workshops and participants in Persiga Forum has been increasing in the last uh, uh, we, we almost uh, co conduct now around 50 or, or around 50 workshops uh, per year or meeting regular meetings and in the last biennium uh, uh, the participants are exceeded uh, uh, more than thousand participants experts and uh, stakeholders in the uh, meeting and thank you very much thank you I would like to call for the floor, Dr. Maher, Maher Amr. Dr. Maher has an, over, has an over, over 23 years practical experience, mainly along the Red Sea in marine environmental investigation, planning, baseline surveys, and monitoring program. Starting from 2011 until now, Dr. Maher worked as the Persica Regional Coordinator of Biodiversity and Marine Protected Areas Program. Assalamu uh, alaikum. Uh, good evening, everyone. I am going to uh, throw some light on Persica Marine Protected Areas Network uh, for helping build the resilience in the face of the uh, climate change. Uh, as we know, the Red Sea located in an arid area, like uh, my colleagues Ahmed uh, said. Uh, the Red Sea is uh, occurred in the most uh, warmest area in the world, characterized by high, uh, high evaporation rate, high uh, uh, sea surface temperature, high salt content, uh, and it is deep sea, uh, semi-enclosed, uh, uh, rocky boundaries. There is no uh, rivers in flowing in the Red Sea. That leads to the it is, uh, oligotrophic sea. Uh, and this condition is perfect for the uh, occurrence and the flourish of the coral reef. On the other hand, the Gulf of Aden uh, considered as one of the most productive uh, water basin in, in the world. Uh, basically, the original, the global value of the this sea coming from the diversity of coral reef uh, habitat in the central sea uh, on the in Saudi Arabia and, uh, and Sudan, the distinct geography of number of endemic species and the endemic, the unique uh, coral reef around the Sinai in Egypt and the atoll-like formation in Sanganib in Sudan, and the extensive stance of mangrove along the whole 
costs of the VT, the unique biodiversity of Socatra archipelago in Yemen, and the extensive stock of commercial fishes in the Gulf of Aden. So, healthy marine ecosystem provide abundant resources for people, while unhealthy marine ecosystem damaged by destructive activities are enabled to provide as many resources for people. The, econ the economic benefit of MPAs to sustain food and the livelihood resources. For example, one hectare of mangrove may produce more than 600, 600 kilograms of fish per year, and one square, square kilometer of uh, healthy coral reef may produce 20,000 kilograms of uh, reef. That is uh, enough to feed 400 people with 50 kilogram per year. Also, the density and the abundance of fish increased inside the MPA more uh, six to ten times other than outside of the MPA. That uh, MPA may reduce the poverty by creation uh, of job uh, opportunities in MPA management and the tourism. But MPAs faced many uh, anthropogenic and the natural uh, impacts, like uh, increasing population and the coastal settlement, habitat modification and coastal pollution, illegal fishing and destructing uh, fishing. While global threats like climate change, the elevated temperature and the light intensity may lead to mass bleaching of a coral reef, and the ocean acidification may destruct all calcareous ecosystem like coral reef and the mollusks, all uh, uh, species that have uh, external uh, calcium carbonate skeleton may be destroyed by increasing the ocean uh, acidification. What should we do is address the immediate anthropogenic threat to the ecosystem or increasing, try to increase the resilience of this ecosystem and improve the ecosystem resilience by reducing fishing uh, effort, eliminate destructive fishing, and reduce coastal uh, pollution, and establishment a resilient MPAs network. So, Persica uh, member state signed on a protocol for the conservation of biodiversity and establishment uh, MBA network along with the Red Sea and Gulf of Aden. The objective of this protocol is to provide for the conservation and the protection and the restoration of the health and the credibility of the ecosystems and to safeguard the threatened species, critical habitat, site of particular importance, and all ecosystems along the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden. After signing of this protocol, uh, 12 MPAs declared along with the uh, Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden and they represent all the ecosystem and the fragile ecosystem and the species occurred inside this uh, uh, Persica MPAs network. The objectives of this regional network is to develop regional capacity, provide sustainable uh, use of living marine resources, support the local and the national economic and the social development, involve local communities and the stockholder as a partner in MPAs management, conserve representative and the prime example of ecosystems, conduct research and monitoring, enhance public awareness for the marine resources, protect the unique cultural heritage uh, along with the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden, and implement a regional legal framework. The, uh, for uh, to create uh, a resilient MPA network. It must uh, uh, contain effective management. So, Persica annually uh, evaluate the management effectiveness of all uh, MPAs along with the in, inside the network. Twelve uh, MPAs uh, evaluated for according to management effectiveness uh, annually, and also uh, the, the resilient MPAs must contain. Uh, are able to uh, risk breeding through inclusion of replicates. So all uh, fragile and decay habitat uh, representing in uh, Persica uh, MPAs network. 
full protection of the critical areas that can serve as uh, a source of seeds of re or replacement, also maintenance of biological uh, diversity. So uh, PESCA uh, increased the resilience of MPA network by managing other anthropogenic stress that uh, degrade the ecosystem and promoting key species uh, function group marine habitat. So we have uh, a regional action plan for coral reef, for mangroves, for uh, sea grasses, for dugong and the marine turtles. Oh, and this regional plan based on a national action plan in all Berska region. Also, Berska tried to uh, raise the resilience of uh, coral reef. So we install mooring buoys for the uh, protection of the submerged reef from, uh, from anchoring of uh, ships. We install about 50 mooring buoys in the coast of Jeddah in Saudi Arabia and about 22 uh, mooring buoys in the Aqaba. Uh, on the other hand, the Egyptian side installed the largest mooring system in the world with more than 1,000 mooring buoys along the Egyptian submerged reef. Uh, this uh, mooring installation tried to uh, protect the uh, coral reef from the destructive activities uh, by uh, divers and uh, snorkels. Also, we try to restore some ecosystem, uh, coastal ecosystem like mangrove and the transplant and uh, restore mangrove, degraded mangrove in Djibouti and Egypt and assessment all the mangrove on the uh, Saudi Arabia Red Sea coast. One minute. Mexico, Bersica uh, addressed climate change by protect, uh, in protected areas, reduce other ocean stressors. Network provides corridors for shifting species and the habitat. MBA serves as a control site for uh, monitoring the change. MBA educate and the public and uh, educate the public and the local communities, protecting the habitat that can help mitigate climate change impact by storing the carbon. Uh, like the mangroves, sea grasses, and uh, salt marshes. Finally, Persica MBA provides a distinct advantage in addressing the impact of climate change by providing a focal area for management and the science to reduce stressors, monetary condition, and the trends, and engage the public in the process of the management of MBA. And also, Persica networks are designed to maximize ecological connectivity between marine protected areas serving to increase the protection of marine resources with special references to the main coastal case species, coral reef, mangrove, and uh, sea grass. Thank you. Thank you. presentation for this session uh, it will be demonstrated by Mr. Hussain Al Kiswani. Mr. Hussain Kiswani has a master degree in marine science and environmental science management from the University of Jordan. He worked with the Royal Society of Conservation and Nature for seven years and he's also working on introducing element climate pro climate proofing and biodiversity conservation with the protected area and a special conservation area. Recently, he worked with the international expert in producing the strategy for climate change adaptation and implementing for two pilot projects for biodiversity adaptation with the climate change. Go ahead, Dick. Assalamu alaikum. Good, mo good uh, evening. Uh, I think you're uh, a little bit uh, tired at the end of the day, and I'm the last speaker, and I will promise you that I'll not be long, I'll be short and direct to the point. So cheer up. So, <laughs> uh, so what I'm gonna present today is uh, a case study of the efforts done by Persiga uh, partners in the region, and especially in Jordan. So what you're gonna see now is the activities that uh, recently had been done in Akaba. So first of all, I will uh, 
give you an exam an, a brief about the uh, Aqaba itself. So Aqaba has a small coastline. It's almost uh, only 27 kilometers. So a lot of things happening there as well. So most of the coastline areas are densely occupied, as you can imagine, and so far not, uh, for different purposes, uh, fisheries and uh, uh, tourism sites and hotels. And you can see some examples on the uh, picture here. Uh, the coral reef uh, is considered the most diverse marine ecosystem in Jordan because uh, the coral reefs itself, yani it's uh, the most diverse marine ecosystem. Seagrass is also is uh, predominant in coastal shallow waters uh, with depths of uh, 10 meters. So seagrasses uh, play a major role in mitigation, as you know. They are the most uh, ecosystem uh, uh, sinks for uh, who whom sinks the carbon in the water. Uh, the rate of endemism is very high among the re Red Sea fish, fish and uh, represents uh, three, 13, almost 14 percent of total species, so it, which is high. Uh, so this is uh, to brief you about the activities happening in the Gulf of Aqaba. You can see in the dark gray is the city of Agaba, and this is the sh the show shoreline so this is the activities happening so you can see that there's marine parks in the area and there's many places for fishing around the place so it's uh, as i told you before it's condensed and a lot of activities happening and you can see there's some places for uh, which is uh, protected as well in different uh, zoning if you go to the south as well, there's the extension of the marine park. So you can see that it's a long, uh, long uh, area and it's a big area to in conservation speaking. But uh, what I'm going to focus on is that uh, many activities happening here is, the, is about restoration. And restoration is the tool that we are using in Aqaba to increase the resilience of the existence. We had uh, a case that the port, uh, they uh, re located a port in a very sensitive area for coral reefs. So the Aziza, that, which is the Aqaba authority that uh, who is running the place, they decided to re remove and relocate the corals, sensitive and endemic uh, corals to, the, to another area, which is protected now. Uh, and they had a very successful experience in that. Uh, with the success uh, rate of uh, more than 90% of the coral reefs replanted were successful that well, and that is what we need to build on so what, such uh, w the impacts of on coastal ecosystems in uh, aqaba can be summarized in the following uh, according to a recent study in the third communication report of jordan uh, Increased probability of invasion of marine aligned uh, alien species. I'm sorry, uh, coral bleaching, which is uh, happening in such some cases, decreased fisheries production, which is very important for local people. <coughs> Trophic structure and food web changes uh, is expected and is starting to happening to happen. Increased probability of losing protected areas uh, that we are dealing with now because of changes that I'm saying I'm mentioning before increase the extension rate of species. So what we did actually is the vulnerability assessment. It included three components, as you can see in the map and the uh, slide, the exposure and the sensitivity uh, composing the impacts and uh, removing from that the adaptive capacity of this, uh, the species or the ecosystem. We used the time interval of uh, 2040 till 2070 uh, using two emission uh, emission scenarios, the moderate 4.5 RCPs and 8.5, the most uh, the worst case scenario. So the vulnerability, I will brief it in two. Uh, the results of the vulnerability, I'll brief it in two uh, sentences only. Uh, it, yeah, the geographically restricted coastline makes Gulf, the Gulf of Aqaba is uh, vulnerable to climate change impacts. This is the bottom line. 
the Gulf of Aqaba contains <coughs> sensitive ecosystems and habitats, which are very vulnerable to changes in the sea, in sea composition. Uh, for that, uh, we recommend the adaptation uh, measures uh, as follow. Uh, using the previous experience in coral replanting, as I said before, in, in sites that will be less affected, so we can increase the resilience there. Enhance the monitoring system of ecosystems and species at the Gulf of Aqaba. And uh, my, the previous speakers told us some uh, experiences happening in Aqaba by uh, having more uh, devices there and for monitoring, which is starting to, happening, to happen. Uh, understanding uh, fishing activities impacts and reduce its effect by and by that we remove the anthropogenic impacts of people uh, develop a monitoring system for introduced uh, and uh, to introduce the endemic and uh, threatened species as happened in uh, saudi arabia uh, example in the beginning the first presentation uh, Formulation of guidelines and legislations for implementation of integrated coastal <coughs> zone management for the entire coastal area at Aqaba. Incorporation of climate uh, change impact implications, sorry, on in the land uh, use planning of the coastal area. And uh, last but not least, training and individual development, because we believe that humans are the most uh, valuable uh, uh, resource in Jordan, so we, we all, always focus on capacity building, and this is the most important thing uh, to enhance the institutional capacity toward climate change. And these are everything. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hussain. Now I leave the floor for you, ladies and gentlemen, to ask the question that you want. All our speakers are here, and our, we have about 30 minutes for all of them to answer your questions. Towards yours. <coughs> Assalamu alaikum. I have a question for engineer Hashim al Salah. Uh, in terms of using TSE, um, how much excess capacity do you have of TSE in Doha that you'll be able to tap into it uh, so easily for irrigation? Okay. Uh, we just started the conservation after two year, uh, three years back, and changing to TSE is just one year back idea. Now, um, you know how scatter shape is in the map. In the map, now we have only the 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 line the um, uh, the primary one, the primary line from north to south, and that's it. Uh, we just give some access to. A new uh, building like um, for the Mondial 2022, the stadium, they have already access, but not the rest. So if I will say in percent, I will say 2%, 3%, not more than that, because we just start. But uh, hopefully in two years, we will complete uh, TSE in all uh, exist and uh, new building. Um, uh, uh, thank you for all the presentation which you have uh, seen. It's very important and good, and I'm very interested in, in your experience. But actually, we, could, we couldn't get it. We, we didn't know what is the methodology and what is the abbrevi abbre abbreviation which you have said. For example, this TSE, what is a TSE, please? Uh, the treatment water. After we use the water, we treat it. We don't just... Uh, Put it away we treat it and we put it back for irrigation and uh, hvac system sorry you you talked about uh, water conservation and also on the energy for the gas i think and electricity and in uh, res residential areas and in the industrial areas and but we didn't tell us about how okay the, yeah please I will talk about Qatar and the Gulf country. Uh, the water, we, we use energy, not just uh, for the destination only. 
also for pumping. This is stage two. Stage three, the user itself in our existing building. The fourth thing is the TSE, the treatment water. We treatment the water, so we will use it again, not, uh, not for example, for a diet for a human or something. We can use it for HVAC system and irrigation system. And by the way, the irrigation system in Qatar is 25% uh, of the total consumption in the country. So we are, when we will complete, the, we will save 25% of water just to uh, treat it again. I hope this will be clear for you. <coughs> Dr. Nakhshin from Iraq, we treat it by biologically treated. Okay, I'm not very expert with the treatment. Yeah. It's another, uh, uh, the environmental uh, ministry, they, they treat it. Uh, but they are environmental ministry, so I think they will do it in the good way. Thank you. Thank you for all presenters. I think it is very informative. All of them, but I have very small question to the same about RCTs. You use only the moderate and the high 8.5. What about the low one? I think at least you have to use three RCTs to give you a picture from low to high. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yes, you are right. But uh, what happened that we used the uh, moderate and uh, because what we realized that we uh, looking to the future, we we will not uh, be sure that the, the the low emission scenario will be the fact. Looking at the scenarios happening now and uh, what they call it the uh, business as usual, we are going to the highest uh, scenario. So. Uh, after this long discussions, this is a discussion that happened in Jordan for uh, with the experts and the team that uh, worked with us. It had a long discussion, and you are right. Yani, some of people believe that we should look at the lowest and the highest, and this is the usual thing. But with, what we with, we thought about it because because the lowest is not uh, re uh, reasonable anymore. To put it like this, so we thought that we should study the moderate and the, the high. This is the only explanation. Uh, thank you for the, your uh, interest uh, with these conferences. My question is about uh, uh, Perska. Uh, when you speak about biodiversity, uh, in in uh, one level, uh, the population is imp uh, lo local population is implicated and uh, uh, contributes to the sustainability <coughs> of the resources. Po po local population in uh, different countries is, are they uh, implicated or uh, the, uh, are uh, or the, the government only uh, do uh, what is uh, done, or the population local is. Uh, Uh, the question was about pollution, pollution, population. Involvement of population, involvement of the popula local population. Uh, involvement, involvement of population, population yes. Even, even fisheries and uh, fishers and others, okay? In yeah. AMP, in PA. Yeah. Uh, 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 as uh, my colleague uh, mentioned, and also I mentioned that uh, we have uh, strong collaboration with local communities, especially in protected areas. So, uh, the protected uh, in the protected areas, the local community are, are, are part of the management <coughs> plan. They are considered the management plan of the MBA. They are participating in conservation activities, restoration activities, and also in monitoring and surveillance of the uh, protected areas. They are also, uh, the fishery program also have uh, direct uh, communications and direct uh, collaboration or involvement of uh, local fishermen. And uh, 
in, 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 in they are uh, also uh, uh, receiving training. Uh, we have special programs for community training and uh, also uh, in the awareness education, we have uh, in the, uh, awareness, regional awareness, uh, environmental education strategy, uh, which involve schools in coastal cities and also uh, media and uh, other sectors of the local community. I have another question for Jennifer Faisal Shail from the ADA. Um, the way I understand uh, Riyadh is that, uh, as you described, the, uh, there are two wadis, uh, the Hanifa wadi and the, and the Sulai wadi. And the Sulai can, uh, well, Hanifa wadi is quite, uh, quite empty. There's no overdevelopment on the wadi. It was, it was easy to redevelop and restore it as a, as a, as a water system. Uh, while Sulai seems to be overdeveloped and there's all sorts of buildings over it. So how do you, how do you plan to go about uh, um, managing that? You, you, you spoke about suds. So yeah. I, I couldn't imagine really how you're going to do this with, with the wadi partially covered with buildings. Okay, that's a good point because uh, the project is live now. Uh, wadi Saleh is another project, which is the, uh, uh, let, let's say, the second arm for the city. And uh, this is with uh, Riyadh municipality. They are developing the wadi. As what you said, Wadi Hanifa is very well defined wadi since it's deep. But Wadi uh, Sulay is flat, but still we have the main drainage uh, channel for the Wadi, and it has been identified. Also, there is some difficulties to solve it, but it is easy to divert in such cases or just to go through main infrastructures if there are using box culverts or others. Uh, thank you for your presentation. I have a question for Mr. Hashid. Sure. Um, uh, you presented Tarshid's initiatives that have reduced uh, water energy consumption in the past three years, but Qatar still has one of the highest per capita carbon and water footprint in the world. So is there <coughs> any other policy that you're considering or like subsidiary removal or public campaign uh, awareness campaigns that you know about? Okay, uh, Tarshid, first of all, I, I just want to make clear what is Tarshid. Tarshid is a department, it's a program, <coughs> uh, but we are sponsored directly from His Highness, Amir of Qatar. Um, we have authority to tell each ministry to what to do to conserve water or uh, electricity. Um, about Qatar, uh, it's actually Doha, not Qatar, which is have the highest. Um, because more than 90% of the people, they are in Doha itself, and it's a small area. So we are talking about uh, per capita in, in the kilometer. Uh, th this is the only reason, but if, uh, and we have a dust most of the, of the days in the year, and this is also effect. So it's not about really, uh, we are uh, consume a lot because uh, we don't have a lot of manufacture in industrial in Doha to to uh, uh, to make this issue happen. We don't have a diesel, um, just like one percent of the big trucks they have a, a diesel. So uh, the reason is because they all in Qatar uh, in Doha and it's small area, uh, it's less than five percent of the total uh, uh, size, uh, the total. Uh, <coughs> space in Qatar and uh, as I mentioned we have dust m most of the days in the year this is the only reason y yes and actually there's um, we have another uh, uh, company they I hear from the environment uh, ministry they brought some company from um, I, I forget from where exactly and they make their study and they say uh, there is very big gap between the reality number and what's published. So it's not really, uh, we have this issue in Qatar. Is it possible to make a comment or is it just 
Can I come back again? Sorry? May I ask another question? Of course, of course. <laughs> Thank you very much. Of course, sure. This goes to Persiga. Actually, uh, they have studies and on groundwork. I'm ask, asking about the sustainability and replication of this, this work. Is there any, any measures taken for sustainability for this uh, uh, fisheries or uh, this diving or replicating this in other area? Thank you. Thank you for the question. Uh, sustainability, uh, actually, the, 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 uh, especially for this uh, community program, we have usually sustainability strategy. And for each project, we have sustainability strategy to sustain the, uh, the, uh, the, the project activities. And this strategy, uh, I'll give you some examples. We, we make it in, in consultation with, 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 uh, with, uh, with these stakeholders with themselves. Like now in, uh, we have uh, some projects or some uh, community-based projects in uh, uh, Dongunab, uh, Marine Protected Area, and also in uh, Wadi Jamal in Egypt, protected area. We have uh, uh, sub projects developed for uh, generating incomes from non-extractive use of uh, marine resources, mainly ecotourism, enhancement of ecotourism, involving fishermen in ecotourism, and also sustainable fishery based on, uh, especially for some commercial species based on management and uh, of uh, spawning, uh, spawning uh, grounds and spawning uh, populations. Uh, uh, the design of these uh, projects had, uh, has uh, considered sustainability. Uh, they have sustainability plan for this. Uh, the sustainability plan was developed in consultation with which involve which include also all the even the. Uh, the funding, financial aspects, uh, and uh, this training for the, the local community themselves, that the process will be community driving in the future. Uh, like this uh, ecotourism uh, project, we have, uh, uh, for example, uh, class uh, boat tours for villagers, and they have uh, the sustainability uh, for of uh, of the of the business, uh, the, the 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 community received training, and they could also establish fund to to to, to sustain the, the business, and uh, uh, there was also uh, uh, screening, a lot of screening of uh, the the tools and uh, the options. Uh, that they can follow or they can adopt in to sustain the the activities, uh, and also involving uh, the, the the local community in the management of uh, protected areas. They are involved in, in the board of the management, and they are involved also in the in the in the monitoring and surveillance of the of the uh, of, of the protected areas. And they are also involved in the uh, fishery monitoring. Uh, so there are a lot of aspects that uh, we consider in these small on-ground sub-projects to sustain the activities by the community themselves. Another example is in Djibouti, we, we have uh, a project on mangrove uh, restoration, <coughs> it's community-based, and now this project is uh, the, the the project uh, the, the 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 registration activities are continuing now. It it, it is it's, it's getting sustainable, and this uh, restored area is uh, is now a source of uh, uh, 
probably was a source of uh, tree of uh, a source of uh, in, in exporting uh, mangroves to other areas. So the process is is, is sustainable. Um, um, thank you. Um, um, in fact, um, I came late and I attended only the last presentation. This is why I will put my question to the last presenter um, on the study on Aqaba. Um, uh, the, the Red Sea is, by its location and nature, it's one of the warmest, warmest maybe, uh, um, sea. Uh, I mean, uh, one of the warmest in terms of temperature, sea surface temperature. Uh, um, which is um, indicating that the ecosystem are already about their maybe upper limit to, in terms of uh, adaptation with this kind of uh, increasing temperature, especially now with the global warming. Um, my, I just want to know whether this has been part of uh, your studies and if you can share maybe more uh, some more insight about uh, the results with re in relation to sea surface temperature and the impacts on the ecosystem that are important for the livelihood of people in, in, as part of your study. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Uh, actually, I disagree with you the, uh, regarding the species uh, of co coral reefs, for, for example, species living in the Red Sea the, the, the species living in the Red Sea are uh, characterized to live in such condition. The normal is the warm temperature is the normal for them. And if you increase the temperature more, this will be the problem. So, so they are not in the higher limit. They are in the normal limit for this species. And this is the characteristics of the species living in the Red Sea in general. So this is the, the point. But we, of course, considered that. We considered the increase in temperature in the sea and uh, also the, the, the changes in uh, pH levels that is expected in the future. And I forgot to say that we used the regional uh, model, uh, not uh, downscaling. And it, it, we used the regional uh, circulation models uh, based on uh, the Cordex uh, uh, working group that uh, with the domain of Africa, we used uh, this uh, set of uh, information and set of models. So this uh, includes all the, 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 the parameters that you said. And uh, we also considered the, the vulnerability of uh, the ecosystem itself before climate change and after. So we made this uh, distinction uh, and uh, we inclu yani we included the, the the human factor as well in the calculations so if you are interested you should look at the third communication report of jordan for the UNFCCC, so you can find all the details there thank you our last question please Hi, um, like my colleague, I walked in very late, catch your last presentation. Oh, okay. So my question will be limited to you, but I'm lucky. <laughs> in, in your presentation towards the final, you, you talk about coral revegetation or replanting, corals, uh, replanting of corals, right? Yeah, yeah. My yes. question is, are you using the same corals from the same area or do you? Yeah, yeah, the same. The same. Oh, so you, you harvest it from that exactly. same area yeah. and move it to another yeah. area as yeah. opposed to? Yes. Bring another species from another. No, 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 no. And no, in your survey, have you also, oh, sorry, another lead up question. Have, in your assessment, have you found a, a coral that's, that's a coral patch or an old coral growth that has more resilience towards sea, uh, sea surface temperature increase as well as pH yeah, and yeah. ocean acidification? Yeah, thank you. And Bruno. using that as a model, as a, yeah, uh, to be honest, we did it. Yani the, the survey is not, uh, it was a study, not a survey. So we didn't uh, get into this uh, details. This needs a lot of data collection, you know, and this is not, 
the, the scope of the study, the study was on uh, vulnerability assessment of the system uh, in the coastal system in Aqaba, Jordan, including the biodiversity in general in Jordan. Thank you very much for our speaker. And thank you very much for you, ladies and gentlemen, for attending our session. Very interesting, diverse area from industrials, from governmental and regional participation in the conservation of the habitat. Thank you very much. Excuse me, join us for a wonderful audience. Please join us for a coffee break, including the, our people who organize us here for their own. All of our speakers, please. From this side. Huh? So it was so interesting. <laughs> <laughs>